What's up guys, it's Gina. Welcome back to another UU campaign episode where every week we try to build up our army of available Pokemon by defeating opponents on the ladder. Um, yeah, we're back at it again. I'm super excited and uh, we're just going to give a quick rundown of the team and our backups. We may actually eclipse um, 12 total members despite losing one in the last episode, but anyway, that's beside the point. Um, we have Suicune, um, nicknamed as Sprite Chaser Z, um, Crocoon, Standard Fair. Uh, we also have Curselax, which is also pretty Standard Fair, named after Brennan. Um, and these two kind of serve as my win conditions for pretty much all teams. And then I have a Spadefnot to take on most forms of Hydreigon. Um, choice Scarf Crook, because your boy needed a Choice Scarfer. Um, Frank Seatrode uh, to stop Gator and to basically spread status. And then we'll Diaz, uh, the Crobat, to check fighting types. Um, as far as backups go, we do have some pretty good backups. We have six of them, in fact. Uh, Salamence, Lucario, Nidoking, Honchkrow, Mega Aggron, and P2. So we do have room to branch out if we want. Um, but today, we're going to be going Mammo Swine Hunting, because your boy would like to add a Mammo, because uh, Mammo is really, really good, and uh, I need a Mence check, so we, we actually end up getting a match relatively quickly. Hopefully, okay, loaded in, cool, and he's using a Gigalith, so already off to a great start. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and lead with uh, Crobat right here, because worst case scenario, he leads with his own Gigalith, and I get a free U-turn off, and our teams are actually kind of similar. Uh, we both have um, Rotom C and uh, stop. We, <laughs> we both have Rotom C and Crobat as well as a couple of other cool members. Like I have that chilling in the back. Where are you? Yeah, Mens. Anyway, I'm clicking U turn right here just because it is my best play. I do get off a nice chunk of damage and I can just go out into um, your boy uh, Rotom Mo to take this thing on, right? Maybe? Actually, you're, I'm trying to decide what to go into here. I think I'm going to go into Rotomo, though, uh, because I can just fire off a Leaf Storm for rel relatively, relatively for free, or a Volt Switch, um, which I may also do, because I'm a Grass type, and I don't really see him staying in right here, um, unless he does want to sack this, but it is actually kind of a nice stop to some of my other stuff. But, you know, uh, his play, he decides to uh, leave it in, so I'm just going to go straight back out into um, Chestnut to take a miscellaneous hit, hopefully not the Explosion. The explosion, nice. Okay, well, well, it's kind of a good thing I didn't need this anyway, because uh, the only thing it really beats is uh, Tentacruel, and it doesn't even really beat Tentacruel, just switches in on Sludge Bomb and can take Scald. He goes into B Drill, which is fine, as uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get a spike up. Actually, no, that's a horrible play. I'm going to spike your shield. Um, hopefully that one goes through, because if I can get a, an extra 12% off on B Drill, that is always nice, um, as it did not go through. Beautiful. Off to a great start. Um, we'll see what he goes into right here. I'd imagine it would be something like Rotom Mo to try to keep the momentum. Um, and if so, he does. Okay, so I'm going to go straight out into my own Rotom Mo and probably just fire off a Willow because I really see him Volt Switching right here. It's not a very favorable uh, matchup from the stand, and he doesn't know what item I am. Uh, if he does Volt Switch out and try to go into something like Crobat or whatever, then it gets a burn. Um, as that did zero. Um, that has to be Scarf because... Like, yeah, this does have some HP, but it's not, like, anything crazy. Um, anyway, something's taking a burn, and almost anything on his team does not appreciate a burn. Um, three out of his four members that he could Volt Switch into are crippled, and he goes in immense, which is beautiful. And no lum. Awesome. <laughs> so, I'm just going to Volt Switch right here, um, just in case he tries to switch out, or double, or whatever. Um, because, ow. Cooked. <laughs> That's an issue. <laughs> Um, I get off some good damage with that, but there's a more underlying problem here, and it's that I'm about to get destroyed by, uh, I'm about to get destroyed by Mints, but, uh, Scarf Knockoff is kind of looking like it gives him some problems. So I'm going into this, and, uh, we know he's Life Orb, so I am very, very free to fire off a Knockoff right here. Plus one knock is going to do a lot to Crobat. Um, it may actually just straight knock out Beedrill. Although, I'll probably switch out into Crobat because that is a 100% safe switch. But, you know, uh, we'll see. He may also go into this thing, in which case I will switch as well. Um, I just got to get it down to a point to where I can weaken. Like, once I've weakened this, 
weaken that a little bit. Like, basically, once I've softened his team a little bit, uh, I can come through with this and win. Uh, right here, I'm just going to go ahead and go into Rota Mo to uh, sack it. It'll, it'll die to rocks, and I get to see what move he locks himself into if he locks himself into Volt Switch. Like, I'm assuming he's choiced. Scarf, maybe? Um, either way, I'll go to Crobat afterwards, unless he Volt Switches. He goes for the Leaf Storm. Nice. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight into Crobat, because once I get a Defog off, then it really, really helps the rest of my team, because I don't have to worry about... Um, constantly switching in anymore and like taking residual and all that stuff and it, and it gives me a lot of room to just pivot between two of my mods and actually uh snorlax may just straight up win because <laughs> unless it's acid spray tentacruel then i think i've got it in the bag but you know we shall see we shall see um he does end up switching out in tentacruel which is very nice uh for me because i can just go straight away for a u-turn because i don't want to keep this thing around in order to check beedrill unless he's like scarf tentacruel then you know i'm gonna be okay so uh, he's going for scald right here no matter what so i'm just gonna go into my own snorlax because if I can get a uh, couple curses up, that'll be very nice. He chooses to go for the T-Spikes, which, you know, I guess is a pretty cool play, because it uh, stops me from... Like, it basically puts Crook on a timer, but he just goes for the knock, which is fine, because I'm just getting curses up right here, like, it's nobody's business. And if he goes into Rotom right here, I'm going to lock myself into Body Slam, because I'm assuming he'll trick me if he goes into Rotom. Um, but other than that, I think this is a wrap. Because unless he's Acid Spray or like Clear Smog or whatever. Okay, yeah. Your, your boy going for Body Slam right here. I've been around the block a couple of times. I know what this thing is going to do. Um, and I don't mind having this take a trick because basically it, Scarf Snorlax is about to soften his team. Um, and... And then basically Crook can clean up late game. So that is the game plan right here. Uh, hopefully it does end up working out. If not, I do have Crobat in the back. Uh, that Leaf Storm did zero. Um, so basically he has to choose something for fodder here. I would imagine he goes into Crobat. Um, although Crobat is maybe his worst play because uh, it pretty much gives Crook free reign. Um, but he has to go either into Crook or into... Not into Crook. Oh, he goes into Tentacruel. That's that's a really interesting play, I think, because um, I still do have Suicune plus Crobat to wall his other physical attackers. He goes for the Skull, trying to get the burn. Doesn't get it, which is very fortunate for me. And I can just fire off another Body Slam. At this point, even if he burns me, it will still to a KO Tentacruel. And he can't really switch anything else in risking the burn. So I think I've put myself in a pretty good position right here. Uh, he doesn't get the burn, which, hey, I dodged two Scalds. Not dodged, but dodged two burns from Skull, too. You guys know what I mean. Anyway, um, I think Snorlax could potentially get one more kill if I do get the uh, para on whatever he sends out. Although it still may be faster because I am a minus two speed Snorlax, um, even though I do have the scarf. Snorlax is not really outpacing things, so. Hmm. Basically, it's a coin flip on what he's going to go into here. He ends up going into Beedrill. Um, part of me wants to pick up another another Crobat. I haven't decided if I should be able to do that yet. I'm leaning towards no, just because I feel like it creates a lot of imbalancing and I can just stock up on top-ranked threats. So, probably not going to do that. I don't really want to pick up Mega B, and I already have Crobat, that thing. Uh, so, I'm just going to go ahead and add Tentacruel actually because like i see zero way that i lose this battle so tentra cruel welcome to the squad um it, you know what's nice is the spinner it's kind of eh, it's not that great of a mon to be honest not like in my opinion but you know not really much else that i would add because i wasn't about to add a gigalith and i'm not really a huge fan of mega b especially when i do already have a mega aggron chilling in the back and i feel like mega aggron does a lot more um in terms of the play style that i'm kind of building off of right here which is more bulky offense than uh, mega b drill does so i am just going to go out into crobat right here and probably fire off a brain bird as he misses the hypnosis nice um i get off a good chunk of damage and 
Right here, I'm just going to go out into my Suicune, kind of anticipating him to sleep me, but he can't do that anyway because of the T-Spike um, as he tries to go for the Hypnosis, but it fails, so there it is, people. As long as I can get off his Scald right here and he's not Taunt, um, as soon as I burn him, it's over. So, it's looking like a wrap, basically just, can, can you die already, please? Ah, there it is. All right. So we advance our record to 11 and 1, and we're going to go ahead and grab another one. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause it until then, because i got to clear my throat. Anyway, uh, I'll catch you when we have another one. Anyway, uh, I'm back, and we got a nice fat team chilling in front of me. I already know which mod I want out of all of these, and it's going to be Hydreigon. It's a matter of will I be able to win this battle. <laughs> that, is, that is indeed the question. So, because I can't win with either one of these two fat things due to this core right here. So it's basically just a matter of not letting him set up. I'm, And I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, lead with my Rotom. Because Rotom can either burn something turn one or can Volt Switch out versus something. Either way it works. If he goes into Hydreigon, I do have Spadef Knot. Um, and that's really what it's here for. So I'm fine with rolling with that. And he ends up leading Hydreigon. Nice. If he Fire Blasts here, I'm kind of toast because there's not a whole lot that I have to take this thing on, and this may turn into another, like, 150 turn stall fest as I PP stall Vaporeon, because if that's what it's going to take to do, if that's what it's going to take to win, then I'll do it, because your boy's not about to lose. So, <laughs> he could also be Taunt, Ruse, Dual Stab, because this thing actually just recently got bumped up to S rank, like, the day as I'm recording this, as he goes for the flamethrower. Still absolutely chewed. Chestnut, you monster. I'm just gonna fire off a Dream Punch, because if I can weaken Hydreigon, that's really, really nice for me. If he goes into Crobat, it is not a big deal at all, because even though I don't really have a solid switch into Crobat, like, Suicune still will switch into it relatively well. So, it's kind of weird. I'm not hitting any of the target mons that I really want to hit, because right now I have kind of a list in my head of mons that I want to pick up. First of which is uh, Mammo, because I really want to get Mammo to accompany the rest of my mons. It can, like, get, like, it can set up rocks, it can lure Pert and all that stuff with Freeze Dry. Um, why did you leave that in? No, I'm a fighting type. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm just going to go out into Snorlax right here, maybe. Or I could go out into Crocodile. That is another option. Actually, why? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Suicune, then I'm going to double to your boy Rotomo, because if I can continue to apply, or if I can apply offensive pressure to that Vaporeon, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to deal with. So, so he just goes for Flamethrower, and we double. And if he stays in here, he may actually be stupid. But, well, he he's, he either just read me like a book, like hardcore Shakespeare read, or he it, or he just has zero idea what he's doing and doesn't know this is a water type. I, I, I think I'm going to trademark Shakespeare read as something that you can say when you like read somebody or when you make a play. Like, oh yeah, that was a Shakespeare read. Okay, this guy left. So we're going to go ahead and pause until he gets back. Um, not really sure whether to take a mon for that I probably will I'll take up I'll take Hydreigon on his spoils of war if he doesn't come back but anyway we're gonna go ahead and pause it see if he comes back and uh, I'll I will either catch you guys in a new match with Hydreigon chilling in the back or I will uh, come back when he comes back if that makes sense anyway either way I'll be back all right uh, last guy timed out look at that we got a mammal right here Look at my team, zero mammal switch-ins, except Suicune, which takes like 38% from an EQ, which is still a lot. Um, I feel like my best lead is... See, he has two potential leads, Beedrill and uh, Mammo, at least in my eyes. And I don't really have something that appreciates both of them. So, <laughs> that's kind of an issue. I could lead Crook, but that's like horrible lead. So, I feel like I'm just going to go ahead and lead Suicune, because if he leads Whimsicott, then he leads Whimsicott, and that's okay. Um... If he... Okay, he leads Wimscott. Well, you know, what you gonna do about it? Because uh, I have Crobat, and Crobat is pretty much 100% safe switch into this. Except if he stuns Spores, which is kind of lame. Because, you know, I don't have a Cleric on this team. But he just ends up going for a sub. Haha, -ha, I'm Infiltrator. You cannot do this to me. Please, th this set is really annoying. But, you know what? I'm actually glad it's this set rather than, like, Life Orb Offensive Pivot. 
because that thing is just super annoying and uh, gone, destroyed, fresh slices of infiltrator. And this guy forfeits too. It's just random forfeits out here. So it looks like we're picking up Mammo Swine because I'm counting that as a win. Your boy would like more mons. <laughs> um, and we're only 15 minutes in. Oh my god. We're, we're gonna, we may get a full team of six today at this rate. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it until I get back. Because, you know, n no dead time. We back, and I'm considering swapping one mon. Like, I will probably completely remake this team before the next episode, just because we are getting a little bit higher up on the ladder, and people will stop, will start to be more competent, so. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and lead Crobat, because Crobat is a good lead versus team, and he ends bleeding Pert, which is fine, because I do have a safe switch in, in Rotom C, I can just donk this with a Leaf Storm, although, I'll probably, actually, I'll Volt Switch, because I don't want that to be, like, Flash Fire Arcanine, as, uh, if he sets up a Rain Dance here, this could be a little bit of a problem, but we're gonna hope he's not Rain Dance. Um, he does also have Crobat, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not, like, the most annoying thing in the world. He just goes straight away for the Ice Punch. Ow. Ow. <laughs> and if he's Jolly, I won't outspeed him. I'm gonna fire off a Leaf Storm, because if he does go into Gudra, or, like, Weezing or whatever, I feel comfortable Pain Splitting. If he goes into Florges, I'm even more comfortable doing so. And if he's jolly, then, you know, we just got absolutely styled on, which is a little bit unfortunate. I feel like he would rain dance there or get up his rocks, considering this is the only thing that gets rocks. As he goes into Gudra and gets a sap sipper, so good play. Um, looks like I'm just volt switching because this thing is not, like, super nice versus team. But, you know, it's something and it's not worth, like, just clicking Willow and having him go into uh, Florgis. Because Florgis is actually a little bit of a problem for this team. So, we'll see how I manage to handle that later. Um, flamethrower, is that what we're going to see from this end? I feel like Snorlax is a good switch in. Snorlax, in general, just absolutely destroys his team. Because after I get a couple of curses up, there is actually nothing he can do to stop me. Except if he's Dragon Tail. Dragon Tails, Dragon Tail. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and Scald. Because, you know, it's Scald. If you have it, you click it, get a burn. Unfortunately, no. And he has T-Bolt. Sick. Sick nasty, bruh. Anyway, I'm gonna go into Crook, predicting him to do that thing again, and then I can hit him with a knockoff and get rid of this item, which is super nice, because once his AB is gone, it makes it a lot easier for just, like, miscellaneous attacks and all that stuff. Because, you know, like, you know, if you can get rid of something's item, like, that's why knockoff is such a good move. But... Uh, we're going to go and hit this guy with the timer because I do not want to sit here and do absolutely nothing. Um, I guess looking at his team, what I would pick up. Oh. Oh. Huh. Alrighty. Well, wasn't expecting that, but, uh, you know, I still think we can win. Like, it's not actually an issue. Um, lucky prediction, pretty much. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and burn him right here, because I'm feeling kind of real. And if I can burn this, that would be very nice. If he goes out to the floor, just I pain split it and weaken it for a Suicune. The only issue is that this thing is gonna be just a pain. Because I, both of my sweepers are like really fat setup sweepers that don't really appreciate being dragon tailed out. Uh, right here, I'm clicking U-turn, predicting the uh, Thunderbolt. The more I can wear this thing down, the better. Because, you know, Gudra, like, Gudra's not like that good of a mon. It's just really fat, especially, and I don't really have a lot of... Like, I don't have, like, a banded user. I don't have, like, a prominent physical attacker outside of Crobat that can just, like, hit with hit with relative power right off the bat. Which, you know, you kind of need to break through these sort of things. But, anyway, predicting T-Bolt, I think I'm going to go out into... I'm going to go out into Chestnut because just kind of choose any move that he wants to go for. Because it can't be hit by Focus Blast. God forbid he goes for that. Um, he goes to T-Bolt again, it's far too easy, and, uh, we're gonna go ahead and scout the flamethrower, maybe? Is it worth it? I kinda wanna save this to split something now, 
Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get up a spike right here because I feel like I can tank a flamethrower if he does choose to go for it. And uh, while it's just not helpful, it's like it really only walls that if it's a sludge bomb. Like, what? Well, well, and, and it gets sludge bomb. Like, don't get me wrong, but. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna go for the spiky shield right here, potentially on the Brave Bird, because I do feel like it is my best play, and, uh... If I can get spikes up, this thing becomes a lot easier to beat, because then it'll take 12 on the switch and 12 from burn, and... Yeah, okay, sweet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to formulate how you boys supposed to win this game, and I feel like I can now win this game with, uh... Snorlax, as long as I prevent him from passing a wish from that thing to that thing. So he ends up going for a defog right there, which is fine. I'm going to go out into Rotom Mo uh, on the predicted Brave Bird because I feel like he will know that I can't click that again and he can Brave Bird relatively for free. He'll knock that out, then I can go into Snorlax and start doing the thing where things start dying, assuming he's not taunt, which would be really, really annoying, but if he's taunt, then you know, it's just something we're going to have to work around, um, it's not an impossible issue, but uh, he just ends up going for the defog again, fair enough, um, I'm just going to volt, because I don't want to risk losing momentum, if, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of assuming he's going to Brave Bird right here, but just in case he U-turns or hard switches, then, okay, goes into Arcanine, see, look at that, free damage, people, Get her done. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go out into Crobat to scout the set because while he's intimidate, I don't want him being like banded or something. And then I can throw up a quick cal um, and see how much this is gonna do because I'm assuming he's banded because we didn't see any uh, recovery. So Crobat, you uh, you choice band psych. We ain't choice band itemless. Um, we're not 252, we're like 148. What do we hit? 246. Wow, you're kind of weak. Um, it's like 132, maybe? 246? Is that 132? No, it is significantly lower. 120. Uh, Brave Bird 2. Arcanine. You, you. Offensive. Brave Bird is going to be 49 to 59. I don't really need this for anything, so I'm just clicking Brave Bird. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a good switch into Forges, but he's Life Orb and this is gonna die now, so that is very, very nice for me. Because getting that Arcanine out of the way essentially makes it a lot easier for Rotom to come in and pivot, because a lot of his team is really slow, and uh, I don't really have to fear any of that anymore. And uh, once I do get Crobat out of the way, I can start laying down some spikes. That'll be very nice because then I can control the hazard battle rather than him basically just shoving me around with like constantly getting my spikes off the field, which is a pain. But uh, he goes out into his own Crobat right here. I kind of just want to Brave Bird again because it, I do feel like it is my best play. Then, and even if he like wins a speed tie and knocks me out, then I can go out into. Wait, is he banned? That just occurred to me that he could very well be banned, banded, which would explain why he didn't click Brave Bird versus Rotom, as he goes for the U-turn. Nice. Um, let me actually calc that real quick. We're we're, we're gonna be that crazy guy who calcs everything. Uh, UU choice band. Uh, UU choice band. What do we hit HP wise? Uh, 355. 355. So let's pump you up. That's what we're going to do with Crobat's HP, because uh, Crobat got to hit that weight room. Crobat got to get a little bit bigger on 176, and it's like 60 defense to get you to 196. No, it's, un it's uninvested. Um, Trench Bandit U-Turn will do 7 to 8. Yeah, I feel like he's banded, so I'm just going to go ahead and click U-Turn right here, then probably pivot out into my Suicune, because Suicune is, I feel like, the worst of my two win conditions this game. Um, I do get a nice crit right there, and... Actually, sacking Rotom may be my best play. False, that is maybe my worst play. Um, I'm, go I'm gonna go out into Chestnut, because Chestnut doesn't really do anything for me, because it loses to that, it loses to that, it loses to that, and uh, can play that to a draw. So I can eat this Ice Punch, it's fine. It w we are out here taking zero from all attacks. Um, I can just go ahead and uh, get up some seeds right here, because I do feel like he's going to switch, and then I can get some 
HP off of Crobat, which is very, very nice for me because just wearing that thing down and making it not be a nuisance is beautiful. He goes into Gudra. Good play. Um, it's fine, though, because I'm just getting up a spike. This thing is getting worn down, and there's not a whole lot he can do about it. If I do get a spike up, the uh, pro of this is that I can make it a lot harder from the pass another wish into this because I won't need to do that much damage. So, um, I could see him doubling the crowbat right here as he just drops a Draco, which is absolutely fine because I'm just clicking spiky shield again, um, getting another 12% off, making sure this dies to a spike when it comes back in. And now he has rendered himself setup fodder more, more or less because... I can just go into your boy Rotom C and click Volt Switch, probably just knock that thing out. Or I, what I'll probably do is go into Crobat, click Brave Bird, because then I can force a speed type potentially with his Crobat. If he locks himself in a defog, then he gets set up on by a Snorlax for free. And this is all assuming he sacks Gudra, because once Gudra goes down, I feel like the game is pretty much over. But. Um, anyway, going back to what I was talking about earlier, to which mod I would want on his team, we already have a Crobat, not really in the mood to pick up Megapert, um, Arcanine, eh. I could, I could go for, uh, nice, he's, he's gonna go down to Spiky Shield, because he chose to go for the detail, so, um, if anything, I'll probably pick up Floor, just because if I can, like, throw together a balance team, that'll be pretty nice, even though I'm pretty horrible with balance, uh, because Floor just can run, like, CM, too and just be really fat and annoying. So, uh, we'll see what he goes into right here. I would not be shocked at all to see Crobat, because I do feel like that is his best play. Um, but if he goes, yeah, he goes into Crobat, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get another spike up, because I do want to see what movie locks himself into. If he locks himself in a Brave Bird, then um, he, of course, knocks me out, and I feel like I can go into my own Snorlax, I may just go into Suicune and rest up real quick, because Suicune can also beat his team, it's basically what do I want to win with at this point, um, the only thing that would stop that is clear smog wheezing, which I've seen before, like it's not out of the question, but it's just a little weird, uh, let me go ahead and calc how much this does to Suicune, um, Ray Bird does a lot actually, so I could bank on the burn, or I could rest up, take 30, or take 40, then leftovers is 34. So it's looking like almost for sure a 3 at KO. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going straight away for the rest right here, because if we can get a little bit more uh, damage on this Crobat just by him clicking Brave Bird, then that is, of course, very, very nice, as he just straight up crits me. Wonderful. Um, I think that may be the game. That may very well be the game. Um, I'm going to go ahead into my own Crobat. That's so lame. Just because... Man. Disappointing. Um, the only way I think I win is if I can f scare his Crobat out. Um, as he goes for a Brave Bird, it's fine. Rotom. Looks like I'm sacking you for damage. <laughs> we may see a last month's Norlax sweep. Um, bro, it ain't over. Uh, let me go ahead and calc how much this does to Snorlax. Uh, you you curse lax, that does half. Oh my god. Like, it's some... It, that's aggravating, because at some point, like, that's not a very good game at all. Because I had that game in the bag. Mm, disappointing, it's okay. Um, my hope is that he kills himself due to recoil. Or that... Like, I chew this, I rest, and then I sleep talk a body slam. I think that's the only way I can win. Because um, I can't curse right here. At all. Under any circumstance, I cannot curse. But... Huh. Ha ha ha. If he switches right here, I have a chance, but he has zero reason to switch. Unless he's like, oh, I just want to like make sure this doesn't get out of hand or whatever. Um, yeah, he goes for a Braver. That did 51. Okay, yeah, I have a chance. If I get a curse right here, I can win. Um, if I don't get a curse, I cannot. Because um, he will die due to recoil, no matter what. And I will be at 50-some percent if I do get plus one defense. Oh, God. Curse, 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 curse. Of course. Mm. For sure that crit 
won me the game, but it's okay. Um, he goes into his own pert right here. If I sleep talk a body slam, then I guess I have a chance. Um, either way, I don't think I'm taking this very well. Um, so I gotta decide which member to boot. Um, kind of feeling Chestnut, because while Chestnut is at a very good time um, on the team, I just don't feel like... I feel like its job is largely overshadowed by... Um, yeah, let me just look at this for a second. I gotta see what mons I have. I feel like... Chestnut's job is largely overshadowed by uh, Rotom. And I could use Immense Check if I really wanted. Um, could also go Hydreigon. Although, you know what, we'll just take this out right here. And uh, I'll come back and rebuild the team at some point. But anyway, um, you guys will see what it looks like in the next episode. If you guys did enjoy this week's episode of UU Campaign, please make sure to leave a like. It really helps to support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment question of the video, which is... Um, I actually don't know what the comment question of the video should be. Um, it's not Friday yet, but what are you guys doing this weekend? Uh, I will be studying for finals, so... You know, maybe no videos next week for a good portion of the week. We'll see, though. Anyway, with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content. And with that, I'll catch you on the flip-flop.